Welcome to this lecture about model selection with the archaic information criterion, also known as the AIC value. In this video, we'll see why we should not use model selection based on p values or the r square value. Instead, we'll see the strength of using the AIC value or the AICC value when selecting a model. AIC is a measure that can be used to select the best model out of several candidate models. AC is usually used to select models when you do not have access to a validation dataset, usually due to a small sample size. Like most other selection methods, the problem with AC is that it tends to overfit. This is why it is recommended to compare only a few models that make sense based on some prior knowledge. To explain how model selection works, we here just use a small dataset where the aim is to test if the variables age score on a math test, and 6 can be used to predict the systolic blood pressure. Let's fit the following model to the data. This model includes all explanatory variables. When we fit the model to the data, we estimate the values of these four parameters. We now start with model selection based on p-values. If we use the software, we'll get the following estimated parameters of the model with associated p-values. Since the variable math score is not significant, because its associated p-value is greater than a generally significance level of 0 0.05, we can drop it from the model. We can see that the reduced model that includes only the two explanatory variables h and 6 now only has significant terms, which means that we can stop here and consider this model as the best model. However, suppose that we now like to include also an interaction term between age and sex. This will result in that none of the explanatory variables are significant. We could argue that we should remove the variable math score from the model because it has the highest p-value. But we will then end up with two terms that are non-significant. If we remove the variable six, we must also remove the interaction term because the interaction involves the variable 6. However, if we remove the variable 6 from the model, age is no longer significant. This example shows that it can be really confusing to do model selection based on p-values. Let's try a number of different models to see which of these that fit best to the data. One measure to determine how well a model fits to the data is the residual sum of squares. Remember that the residual sum of squares is the sum of the squared differences between observed values and estimated values, which corresponds to the vertical distances between observations and the line. The difference between observed and estimated value is called a residual. The lower the residual sum of squares is, the better the model fits to the data. If we compare the individual variables, we see that the variable 6 is better than the math score, which is better than age. If we combine these variables into models with only two exclamatory variables, we see that the model with the combination of age and 6 is clearly the best model because it has the lowest residual sum of squares. However, if we add more terms to this model, the model fits better and better. We see that the model with the most parameters fits best to the data because it has the lowest residual sum of squares. Another measure of how good the model is is the R squared value. The R squared value involves the residual sum of squares and the total sum of squares, which is the corresponding sum of squares of a model with only an intercept. The corresponding residual sum of squares of the model with only an intercept is here 300. If we plug in, for example, the residual sum of square of the model with a variable 6, we see that we can calculate the corresponding r squared value. Watch the lecture Linear Regression, the r squared value, if you like to know more. In this example, the r squared value shows how much of the variation in the systolic blood pressure that can be explained by the explanatory variables. We see that the model including age and sex explains about 93% of the variation, which indicates that it is a very good model. However, a model including all explanatory variables and the interaction term 
is clearly the best model because it has the lowest residual sum of squares and the highest R squared value. So, what do we really mean by the best model? We see that the variable math score has a very low R squared value, which indicates that it is useless in predicting the blood pressure. This makes sense because a person's blood pressure should not be associated with how well a person performs on a math test. Even though we add completely useless variables to our model, such as math score and favorite car, the model fits better and better because the model is then more flexible. A model including useless variables is not a good model. The reason why it has a high R squared value is because the model overfits, which means that it fits well with this data, our training data, but will not fit well with new unseen data, the test data. A good model is therefore a model that fits well with the data and which only includes explanatory variables that actually contribute to predict the blood pressure. A good model is therefore a model that does not include any useless variables. However, which of these two models, a model with and a model without an interaction term, is the best model? Well, if men and women actually increase their systolic blood pressure at different rates during aging, this is the best model. However, since we have only taken a sample, it is hard to know if that is the case. We could then compare these models by calculating the ASC value of both models. The ASC value is calculated like this, where k is the number of estimated parameters, and this is the log likelihood of the model. We can think of the likelihood as we place, in this case, the normal distribution curve around the regression line with a mean that corresponds to the value of the line for each data point. The joint likelihood is the product of all the heights in these eight normal distribution curves. The higher the likelihood is, the better the model fits the data. The log of the joint likelihoods in this example is negative 25.59 for the model where only age is included. Watch the lecture about ordinary least squares versus the maximum likelihood estimator to understand the details of how the likelihood is calculated in a linear regression model. We have so far only used a simple notation for our models, but if we show also the parameters, we see that we need to estimate the intercept and the slope. When we calculate the joint likelihood of the model with the estimated intercept and slope, we also need to estimate sigma, which is the standard deviation of the data points around the regression line. The number of estimated parameters in this example is therefore 3. If we plug in the value of k and the log likelihood, we see that the ASC value is 57.2. A good model should have as low AC value as possible. This is because the model that fits well to the data will have a high likelihood value, which means that this term will be equal to a low value. To get a low AC value, this term must also be relatively small, which means the k should be as low as possible. In other words, a good model should include as few parameters as possible but still fit well with the data. For example, the following model includes two explanatory variables, where four parameters are estimated because we also estimate the intercept and the standard deviation. The model including also the useless variable math score has therefore one additional parameter that is estimated. We see that this model fits better because the log likelihood is higher compared to the simpler model However, this model gets a penalty because it includes one additional parameter that is estimated, which explains why this model gets a higher AC value although it fits better to the data. We should therefore select this model because it has the lowest AC value. This makes sense because we have previously seen that the variable math score seems to be useless in predicting the blood pressure. If you instead would calculate the AAC value of these two models, 
we see that the model including both sex and age has a much lower AC value compared to the model including only the variable age. This is because a model including also the variable sex fits a lot better to the data. We can see that if we only include the explanatory variable age in the model, the data points are quite far away from the line, which explains why this model has a low likelihood value. But when age is combined with sex, we get a much better fit because the data points are now much closer to the two lines for men and women. This model fits a lot better, which explains why the likelihood value is much higher for this model. When we only have one regression line, most data points will be located in the tails of the normal distribution curves, which results in a relatively low joint likelihood. Compared to the case when we have two lines, where most of the data points are located in the center of the normal distributions, which will result in a relatively high joint likelihood value. If you have a small sample size, one instead usually uses the ACC value, which can be seen as an adjusted AC value for small samples. As a rule of thumb, a small sample in this case is referred to as a sample where n divided by k is less than 40. Since we only have 8 individuals in our sample, our sample is definitely considered as small. We see that if n increases, this ratio will approach zero and the ACC and the AC values will be more or less identical. The ACC value can therefore also be used when the sample size is large. Note that when we work with linear regression and assume a normal distribution, the following equation is sometimes used to calculate the AC value, where the residual sum of squares is used instead of a likelihood. Since we do not need to estimate sigma when we calculate the residual sum of squares, P is in this case equal to K minus 1. Let's have a look at the models we compared earlier based on the residual sum of squares and the R square value. We have here also calculated the log likelihood, the AAC and the AACC values for all models. Note that the log likelihood gets bigger and bigger for models including more and more parameters. According to the AAC value, this model is considered as the best model. However, when the sample size is small, like in our example, AAC will tend to overfit and select models that have too many parameters. This is the reason why we should use the AACC value instead, which selects a simpler model. Out of all models that we have compared, this is the most likely model given the data. This was the end of this video about the AAC value. In the next video, we'll see how the IAC value can be used in backward and forward selection and in the best subset selection method.